Hi everyone, Jeremy Simon here with 3D Universe. Today I'm going to be showing you a new 3D scanner. This is the Mole 3D scanner from 3D Maker Pro, and it's available in three separate editions, standard, premium, and luxury. The only difference really is which accessories it comes with. So the standard edition basically comes with the scanner itself and the cables that you need to use it. The premium edition adds a uh, tripod as well as a turntable and the Luxury Edition adds a color kit for capturing full color surface textures. For the demonstration today, I'll be using the Premium version that includes the turntable and tripod, though I don't usually use the tripod. I find it just as easy to hand hold the unit, but the, the turntable I do find handy, so we'll be using that today. And uh, I have found this to be really a great scanner, especially for the price, um, considering the capabilities. Um, I've been very impressed with what it can do. The software is also very functional and fairly easy to use. Uh, the documentation perhaps could have been a little bit better as it took me a while to figure out the right hotkeys to do certain things, and I'll explain that during the demonstration. But otherwise, I found the software to be very powerful. Uh, it allows you to do multiple scans from different angles and then either automatically align those scans, or if that doesn't work, you can also do a manual alignment by picking specific points on each of the scans and then using that to align them. And that's a really nice feature to have. So uh, let's go ahead and give it a spin. I'll show you what it can do. Okay, so as I said, the premium bundle includes this uh, fairly nice tripod which is adjustable, so it has a middle section here that you can take out if you want to scan smaller objects. And just leave that component out, connect this right to the base, and you can use that to mount the scanner on and use that position next to the turntable. Personally though, I actually prefer to use it handheld because it makes it a little bit easier to sort of adjust your angle and, and capture from different angles all in the same pass. So you can try it both ways and see what you prefer, but for this demonstration, I am going to skip the tripod. We'll set that off to the side. Now for this test, we're going to use this resin 3D printed miniature here. Uh, this model, by the way, comes from a great company called Loot Studios. They've got a bunch of great models, so uh, I'll put the link down in the description of the video. You might want to check them out. Now, I'm going to use the turntable for this scan, but I'm not going to have it plugged in. It has a USB connection, and that'll cause the turntable to rotate automatically. I like to have full control, and sometimes you'll find that as you're scanning, if you're using the turntable with the rotation turned on, the software will sometimes have problems with keeping the tracking, and it'll lose its place. And it's a lot easier to adjust for that if you're uh, handling the turntable manually. So I'm just going to rotate the turntable like this by hand. Uh, I'll be careful to keep my hand out of the scan, but just using the edge, I'll turn it as needed, and that way I have control over making sure that the software is, is keeping track of the object as I go. So here we go. I'm going to get the software ready, and if you point the scanner at your object, in the software you're going to see a couple of helpful guides. In the upper right corner here, it shows you a brightness preview, and you can use the brightness slider over here to set the brightness and you'll notice that if it gets too bright, you'll start to get uh, sort of red highlights, which I'm not even seeing here because uh, it's not bright enough. If I get closer, you'll probably see some of that here. There you can see those red spots there where it would be sort of overexposed, and that's what you want to avoid. Um, but when I'm at the proper distance here, I'm not going to have a problem. I can keep it pretty much at full brightness here in this case. So you get your brightness set there so that you can clearly see the object without those red uh, overexposure indicators. And then you can choose your scan quality, normal or fine. Uh, I usually just opt for fine just because I want to get the best scan quality possible. And then scan mode, you can choose just geometry or texture. Uh, I don't have the color kit here, so I'm just going to do a geometry scan. And then over on the left side of the screen, you have this other indicator that helps you find out if you're at the right distance for an optimal scan. You'll see if I move farther and closer, that goes up and down on the scale, and you want it to be right around in the middle. The bulk of that uh, graph, so to speak, should be right in the middle, and right at the top you'll notice it says excellent when you're at a good distance. That lets you know that you're about where you want to be for a scan. And so now we're ready to go. I'll go ahead and click scan to start capturing. And now I'm just going to sort of slowly move the scanner around to capture different angles. And you'll see that it kind of starts to fill in 
the object as I do that. And then I can start to rotate the turntable carefully, a little bit at a time. Kind of moving up and down as I go. You want to avoid really fast movements. The slower you go, the better the software will be able to maintain its tracking. You'll notice there's a counter at the bottom of the screen. That's your frame counter, how many frames have been captured. And the number of frames that you can do in a single scan is going to depend really on your system resources, mostly how much RAM you have to work with. Usually I'd recommend keeping it somewhere in the range of 500 to 1,000 frames per scan. You can always do multiple scans, as I'm going to show you here. So you don't need to try to get every single detail and every angle in one scan. I'd say that's a good start. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that frame counter button to stop the scanning process. And it's now going to do some processing. The amount of time that this step takes depends on how many frames you captured, but a uh, fairly powerful computer, it should only be a matter of a minute or two. Okay, and there we have our first scan. Uh, you'll notice there is some noise. That's typical from the raw scan. That'll get cleaned up in a later processing step. Now what we can do here is we can select that base that we use the turntable and eliminate that. To do that, you hold down the Command key on a Mac as you draw a selection. And then under Edit, you can choose Plane Selection. That'll select that whole plane. And then you can push Function Delete on a Mac, and that will remove that from the scan. I'm not quite sure what those keys are on Windows machine. I'm guessing it would be uh, probably the Control or maybe the Alt key. Um, don't have a Windows machine available to test that, but uh, it should be pretty easy to figure out through trial and error. So I'm going to do a little bit more cleanup here, just again using the command key to select and then function delete, rotating it around to find these other bits, and I'll just delete those. Okay. Now we have a pretty good first scan. Now I'm going to click on Append and we'll do another one. For this one, let's change the position. I will lay him down on his back here. And when I click Append, I will again get the preview so I can check my brightness and distance. And when everything's looking okay, I'll click Scan again. and stop that one. Okay, now I'll just repeat that same cleanup process here. I'm going to select some of that base and then edit, plane selection, function delete, and just a few remaining bits here to clean up. Okay, that looks good there. Now let's do another one. I'm going to flip him over and put him face down. And again, we'll click on Append. Check our alignment and distance. And click Scan again. And same process. Select some of the base. Edit. Plane selection, function delete, and then clean up the remnants. Okay. So now we have three scans, which you can see down here, and I can turn all three of them on. You'll see that they're completely in different alignments, as we would expect, because that's just how they were captured. Now I will click on Align and it's going to try to do an automatic alignment. 
And in this case, it looks like it did a pretty good job. Everything does look like it's pretty well aligned. If that had not worked, you do have the option of doing a manual alignment. And that's a process wherein you basically pick three points on the object and you pick those same three points on each of the scans and then you click manually align and it will go ahead and align according to those points that you selected. It's a very powerful mode of alignment for when that automatic alignment option doesn't work. Now, over here in the process screen, you have options to choose from. Fusion is the basic process that sort of brings everything together and cleans it up. Remove noise is going to remove some of that pixelated noise that you're seeing, which is not part of the actual geometry, so I almost always leave that enabled. Repair is going to make your model watertight, and it will actually fill in little holes or gaps. I'm going to leave that one off for this, just because it can sometimes add in pieces that you don't want but it is an option that's there that you can work with if you're trying to get a watertight model. And then Simplify will uh, work to reduce the number of faces. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn on Simplify, and let's use a target of oh, around half a million faces. That should still give us a pretty good resolution model. So with those options checked, I'll go ahead and choose Process, give it a name, Miniature, Apply, and now it asks which data we want to process. I want all three of those scans that we did to be included. So I'll just click Apply. And now it's going to do its work. So you can see the different phases that it goes through here at the bottom. One called Multi-Rebuild and Fusion. Now it's removing the noise and simplifying. And now it gives us an option to export. We can save it as an OBJ file or as a PLY mesh or an STL object ready for 3D printing. We'll go ahead and choose the STL format. And here you can see the final model. And if we scroll around, you can see that it really did pick up quite a lot of detail, especially considering the size of this model. Now you can improve the results further by doing additional scans from different angles. You can also then uh, use a higher number of uh, faces for the simplification if you want to keep more of the original scan quality. But uh, like I said earlier in the video, considering the price of this scanner, that's uh, pretty, pretty decent quality and pretty good detail that it's capturing. This model here is uh, about four inches tall, so it's not very big. So that's, uh, you got to keep that in mind when you're looking at the, uh, the results here, that it's picking up quite a lot of detail at a small scale. So you could take this exported file and bring it into a mesh editing program, something like Mesh Mixer, and do further cleanup in there. If there's little artifacts or little bits that you want to uh, clean up, you could easily do that in a separate program. But this did a pretty nice job straight out of the uh, scanning software, I would say. So that's the Mole 3D Scanner. I hope you found this video useful. And uh, check out our website for the details at shop3duniverse.com. As always, feel free to reach out if you have questions. Support at 3duniverse.org. I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to subscribe. I'll see you next time.